Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. Today's episode comes to you courtesy of Scott, who's been supporting this channel as a general tier patron. I truly couldn't do this without the support from amazing patrons like Scott, so again, Scott, thank you so much. And actually, today, Scott's gonna handle the intro for me. Hi, Mitch. This is Scott from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, for my deck tech, I would like you to build around Horde of Notions, focusing on elementals. So, as Scott said, today's deck tech is going to be built around Horde of Notions with a focus around Elementals. Horde of Notions is a 5-5 Elemental with Vigilance, Trample, and Haste that costs Wooburg. Or in other words, one of each color in Magic, White, Blue, Black, Red, Green. It also has the ability, pay Wooburg, you may play target Elemental card from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. So, Horde of Notions is a 5-color Elemental Tribal Commander that can get you back some really powerful Elementals from your graveyard. And by including some elementals with some really powerful ETBs and LTBs, we can really get the most out of this card. And if we've got a way to sacrifice those creatures, we can get those enter the battlefield and leave the battlefield triggers over and over again. But to do this, we're going to need to ramp and fix our mana perfectly to first of all get this commander out, and then to activate it. But luckily for us, we've actually got some elementals that can help us out as well. So first up, let's talk about those elementals that can help us ramp and fix our mana, as well as do some other really powerful things. First up, there's Smoke Braider, which we can tap to add two mana in any combination of colors to our mana pool. Now we can only spend this mana to cast elemental spells or activate abilities of elementals. But again, in this deck, this can provide us a ton of value because we're running an absurd amount of elementals. A mana dork like this that just costs two can provide us a lot of value throughout the game. But we're also running a much bigger mana dork with Gigantha the Wellspring. It's a 5-5 Elemental Elk that taps for Wooburg, but this mana can't be spent to pay generic mana cost. Now, although we can't use its mana to pay generic costs, that really doesn't matter with our commander. Again, this can perfectly pay for our commander the first time, and then it can also pay for the activations. So, for all intents and purposes, once we're set up, this is basically tap, activate your commander's ability. Next up, there's Incandescent Soulstroke, which sends other mental creatures you control get plus one plus one. And on top of that, by paying one in red and tapping it, you put an elemental creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. That creature gains haste until end of turn, sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. So first up, this is an anthem for all of our elementals. But more importantly, this helps us cheat out elementals from our hand and get them right into play to attack. Now at the end of the turn, we do have to sacrifice them, but again, that's not a big deal for this deck, and in fact, it can be a good thing. So again, with this, we can get a ton of value out of ETB and LTB elemental creatures. And then we can get those creatures back with our commander from our graveyard. Now, as valuable as this and these other cards are, there is still one card in this deck that stands well above the rest, in my opinion. And that would be the Golden Pig, which is the number one card out of our 99, and the Golden Pig for this deck is Risen Reef. Risen Reef is a 1-1 elemental for one green blue. It says when it or another elemental enters the battlefield on your control, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you may put it onto the battlefield tapped. If you don't put the card onto the battlefield, put it in your hand. This card can generate us an absurd amount of value throughout the game. Essentially, anytime this or another elemental enters the battlefield under our control, we either ramp or draw a card. So this can get us a ton of lands into play and a lot of cards into our hand. This essentially gives all of our other elementals ETBs on top of what they already do. And again, with this deck, we're going to focus on getting elementals out of play and back into play so we can get this ETB over and over again. This can put us way ahead of our opponents, not only in ramp, but in card advantage as well, and that's why it's the Golden Pig. But speaking of ramp and card advantage, I'm going to highlight a few more elementals with Cavalier of Thorns, Mold Drifter, and Soul to Harvest. Cavalier of Thorns is a 5-6 with reach, and when it enters the battlefield, you read the top 5 cards of your library, you put a land card from among them onto the battlefield, and they rest in your graveyard. When it dies, you may exile it if you do put another target card from your graveyard on top of your library. So first off, this is going to ramp us the vast majority of the time when it comes into play. And secondly, if we really need to, we can exile it when it dies to get something back from our graveyard. Again, we'll probably save that for an emergency situation, but those times definitely can come up. 
Next up, there's Small Drifter, which is a 2-2 with flying, and when it enters the battlefield, we draw two cards, and it's got Evoke Fortuna Blue. So we can evoke it, draw some cards, get it into our graveyard, get it back with our commander, draw some more cards, and you see where this is going. And speaking of drawing cards, there's Soul the Harvest, which says, whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. So much like Risen Reef, this can provide us an absurd amount of card advantage throughout the game. But outside of rampant card draw, we've got plenty of other elementals with some really useful ETBs and LTBs. So first up, let's talk about Shriek Maw, Wistmare, and Ingot Chewer. Each of these are elementals with evoke costs and ETBs. When Shriek Maw enters the battlefield, destroy target non-artifact, non-black creature. So by evoking this, we're basically getting a Doomblade or more so maybe a Terror type effect. We can take out pretty much any creature on the board for just two mana, and then again, we can get it back with our commander to take something else out too. And again, with this or other things in our graveyard, our opponents have to be careful with what they get into play. Because with our commander in play, they know that we've got access to these kinds of effects. So in a similar way, there's Wismare, which can deal with enchantments, and Ingotcher, which can deal with artifacts. Again, with just one mana out of their vote cost and the ability to get them back, these can provide us a lot of value. But then we've also got things like Night Incarnate and Tornado Elemental, which can deal with even more things. Night Incarnate has an evoke cost of 3 and a black, and when it leaves the battlefield, all creatures get minus 3, minus 3 until end of turn. So this can take out a lot of smaller creatures when we need it to. And then Tornado Elemental says when it enters the battlefield, it deals 6 damage to each creature with flying. We're not going to be running too many flyers in this deck, and again, it's not really that bad of a thing if we get a creature into our graveyard so we can get its ETB back again. So this can wipe out our opponent's flyers, and on top of that, we can assign its combat damage as though it wasn't blocked. But in this deck, some other fantastic ETBs and LTBs come with Flicker Wisp, Fine Lath, and Omnath. When Flicker Wisp enters the battlefield, exile another target permanent, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So Flicker Wisp can really help us utilize our other creatures' ETBs and LTBs. And then when Finelath enters the battlefield, we get a 0-1 green plant creature token for each basic land we control. On top of that, it's got landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, put 4 plus plus 1 counters on target plant you control. So this can make us a ton of plants and then get some of those plants to be incredibly deadly. And speaking of deadly, there's Omnath Locus of Rage. It has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 5-5 red and green elemental creature token. And then whenever it or another elemental we control dies, Omnath deals 3 damage to any target. So this can utilize our ramp to make a huge army. And then it can also utilize that army and all of our elementals to dish out a ton of damage when they die. And speaking of our elementals dying... Let's talk about some fantastic free sacrifice outlets for this deck like Veral's, Demir Houseguard, and Falconrath Aristocrat. Again, being able to freely sacrifice our elementals whenever we need to is a very powerful thing for this deck. If that elemental has a powerful ETB or LTB, we can get it back with our commander. So Varals and Demir can both sacrifice a creature to regenerate themselves. On top of that, Varals has each creature card in your graveyard has Scavenge. The Scavenge cost is equal to its mana cost. So if we've got a creature in our graveyard that doesn't really have an ETB or LTB that we need, we can get rid of it and then actually make it into counters. We can pump up one of our creatures and make them even deadlier. Keep in mind that our commander does have Vigilance, Trample, and Haste. And then Demir Houseguard also has some more utility as well, having Transmute for one black black. So we can discard it and then go search our library for any card that shares the exact same converted mana cost. And at 4 mana, we've got a ton of options in this deck. And then Falconrath Aristocrat is another effective sacrifice outlet that protects itself as well. It's a 4-1 with flying and haste and it has sacrifice a creature it gains indestructible until end of turn. So yeah, it can take a lot to take this out. And of course, we've got some elementals that can act as sacrifice outlets as well, like Seething Pathblazer, Blazing Hellhound, and Skullmulcher. Pathblazer has sacrifice an elemental, Seething Pathblazer gets plus 2 plus 0 and gains first strike until end of turn. So keep in mind that while this free sacrifice outlet can't protect itself, we can get it back with our commander. And then Blazing Hellhound has pay 1, sacrifice another creature, Blazing Hellhound deals 1 damage target creature or player. So this can help us sacrifice creatures and ping down creatures and players. And then Skullmulcher can help us in a different way, it has Devour 1 and when it enters the battlefield, draw a card for each creature it devoured. So by sacrificing a ton of creatures, we can draw a lot of cards with this. And again, by getting those creatures into our graveyard, we can really utilize their ETBs and LTBs even further. But some other cards that can really help us out in this deck are cards like Pyre of Heroes, Geron's Orders, and Final Party. Pyre of Heroes has pay 2, tap it, sacrifice a creature. Search your library for a creature card that shares a creature type with the sacrifice creature and has converted mana cost equal to 1 plus that creature's converted mana cost. Put that card onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library, activate this ability only anytime you can cast a sorcery. So this is like a tribal birthing pod type effect. We can sacrifice one elemental to trade up for an even bigger one. Again, this helps us out in multiple ways. We can tutor out something that has an ETB for the exact situation that we're in. 
And again, we get another elemental into our graveyard that has an ETB or LTB that we want to really abuse. And speaking of getting elementals into our graveyard, Drawn's Orders and Final Party can really help with that. Drawn's Order says, search your library for up to two creature cards and reveal them, put one of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. So again, essentially, thanks to our commander, this is giving us access to two elementals. And then Final Parting is somewhat similar. It says, search your library for two cards, put one into your hand and the other into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. So this can get us whatever we need depending on the situation that we're in, but again, most likely we're going to get an elemental and put into our graveyard. Each of these can set us up for some really big and explosive plays. But now it's time for me to wrap things up and give you my final thoughts on Horde of Notions. This is a fantastic elemental travel commander that gives you access to all five colors. So you can pick and choose whichever elementals that you want, and you can really use and abuse those elementals that have powerful ETBs and LTBs. With the amount of value that you can generate with this deck, once you get going and set up, it can be really hard to stop you. You get your Risen Reef in play, you evoke some elementals, you get them back into play, and you see where this is going. Obviously, there is more than one way that you can build this deck, but this is just the direction that I decided to go with it. If you're looking for the full deck list as well as the upgrades, make sure you check out those links in the description below. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one.